Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tic Tac Tycho. My normal practice schedule these days is to bust out the metronome, pick a moderate to fast tempo, and just go at it, have some fun. But it's been really hot in Silicon Valley the last few days and I'm not feeling it. So instead, we're gonna crank that tempo down. We're gonna have a lot of slow metronome fun. As you might have guessed, this week you're going to need a metronome. Doesn't matter what kind it is, it doesn't matter what other equipment you have, you can use your hands on your body, that's just fine. All of these drills are really pretty easy and again, modify it to make it your own. We'll start with more tempo oriented drills and start to move towards the more artistic oriented drills. And if you like this video, let me know with a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do that. Send me some love and here we go. So I've got the metronome down to 30 beats per minute. It's very, very slow. At 120 beats a minute, you have two beats for every second. At 60, you get one beat every second. And at 30, you get one beat every two seconds. I'm gonna introduce four different drills for this week's video. They're all pretty simple. We'll go through them pretty quickly. The first drill is to listen for the downbeats on the metronome at 30, but to feel and solo at 120. So take that downbeat, double it, and then double that. That sort of feel, but have that pulse coming down on the metronome beat. And when I'm soloing, I'm going to make sure that I'm staying in tempo with the metronome. Here's what it sounds like. Now you could just solo with 120 beats a minute, but with this version, with the metronome being a quarter of that tempo, you have to really lock in to where the metronome is and be careful of where you're surging and slowing down. Our next solo is very similar, but instead of feeling 120, you're going to feel 30. You're going to feel whatever the metronome is actually playing. And it'll go something like this. The thing you'll notice with this drill right away, odds are before the second beat even lands, is your tendency to speed up. It happened to me a couple of times, I had to start over to make a, a good version of this drill, but it's this drill, this one in particular, is excellent for keeping you staying on the beat and not rushing. Our next drill is to take the slow down beat of 30 beats a minute and to subdivide it into eight individual beats. So for example, with this tempo, I'm thinking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm playing every note. And I'm going to accent wherever I want. I've done a whole video on drills just like this. It's not any different, but I wanted to show how it would work with the slow tempo.
If you thought the last drill was going to make you rush, this drill is going to make you rush even more. By playing every single note, your hands are going to naturally want to speed up and you're going to find almost constantly having to hold back. It's an excellent drill for maintaining tempo control. This next drill, I debated putting in or not. Uh, it makes sense for me. I enjoy doing it, but I don't know that I can explain why it's fun for me. And I call it clusters. The idea is you're not going to be playing often, but when you do, you're taking a bunch of notes, a cluster of notes, and you're throwing it at the drum. It's going to be easier to show you than it is to explain, so here we go. So for this drill, it doesn't matter what patterns you play or how often you play them. In fact, you want some distance between one cluster and the next. The goal here is to really, really know where you started and where you ended. Starting on a downbeat, ending on a downbeat, or even passing through a downbeat, but knowing, knowing 100% that you locked into a downbeat. You don't want to just play blah, 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 and think, yeah, okay, there was a downbeat in there. That does no one any good. You might as well just free solo. So you've got that metronome, you really got to lock into it. When we normally solo, we're soloing at moderate to moderately fast to fast tempos. And two things tend to happen. A, we get stuck in the patterns that we normally play. That happens to all of us. And or B, we tend not to think as musically because we're thinking about everything else. So things like nuance and tone and maybe even um, new ideas just don't happen because you're thinking about my hands have to be in certain spots or I'm trying to make big motions and I'm trying to pay attention to different people. Oh yeah, ki and all this stuff. And playing this slow, this uncomfortably slow forces you out of any sort of set habits that you might have built and it lets you, it almost forces you to think. It gives you that much time. And if you have that time to think, not only can you really acknowledge where the downbeats are, but you can start thinking creatively, musically, artistically in ways that you're maybe not able to do with a faster tempo. By no means are those the only drills you can do with a slow tempo. I mean, I only figured this stuff out just by goofing around, taking the tempo down really low and spending some time on the drum or drum, if you will. There's no reason why you can't do the same and come up with drills on your own using the same idea. So if you like this week's drills, if you had some you particularly enjoyed, let me know. If you came up with some on your own, let me know. And until next time, keep on practicing and be well. <laughs>